Raider Campus, how are we doing tonight? Great to see everybody. Hope you had an awesome spring break. I want to welcome you to week one of a two-week series we're doing called Turn Down for What? And in this series, what we're going to be talking about is basically that we've received the greatest news ever. Anybody agree with me on that? Like when it comes to the good news about Jesus, we've received the greatest news ever. So how could we be quiet? How, how could we turn down? How could we stop talking about the good news about Jesus when we've receive the greatest news ever because that's what you do with good news, right? You tell everybody, okay, when you've got good news, all right? So we're going to be talking about that over the next couple of weeks about turning up our talk, our passion, our abandon, and our willingness to sacrifice for Jesus's sake um, during these two weeks. So I hope you'll be back next week. Invite a friend uh, to come back with you next week as we uh, finish the series next week and then move on, like Mark said, to a new series we're going to do. It's called Finished or Blank is Finished, and uh, it's going to be an awesome uh, just closing to the rest of this semester. So in Acts 5, it says at the end of Acts chapter five, that these early believers, like these new Christians, this first century church had received the good news about Jesus. And a lot of these guys were apostles, like the disciples, and, it, it, more, and hundreds of people actually that had seen Jesus risen from the dead. And so they had received, they saw great news that someone defeated death, like someone died and then was raised back to life. Like that's incredible news. And it says in Acts five, they couldn't stop talking about what they'd seen and heard. Like they couldn't stop. It says in Acts 5, they couldn't stop talking about Jesus. I mean, imagine if you saw someone risen from the dead, you wouldn't be able to stop talking about it. You would tell everybody you'd know. You would be posting on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and whatever else there is, you know, Vine and Snapchats and all those kinds of, I mean, you would be talking about it everywhere you possibly could. And that's what these guys were doing. In fact, in spite of severe opposition and persecution, like with their lives being threatened, they say, we, we can't help but talk about it. Like, we can't help it. We saw him risen from the dead. And so Acts 5 says they never stopped talking about Jesus. And so we want the same thing to be true for us, right? I mean, we, we don't want to ever stop talking about what Jesus has done for us. We don't ever want to turn down. We want to turn up the talk, the passion, our abandon, and our willingness to sacrifice for the sake of Jesus. When I was... Uh, a freshman, junior in college, freshman uh, or sophomore in college, I went on my second mission trip that I had ever been on to a foreign country. And so we're on this mission trip and we're hiking this mountain and it's on the border of southern Mexico and Guatemala. It's basically like a rainforest there. And so we're, we're hiking this mountain. Now this mountain is vertical, okay? So when I say like we're hiking, it's more like we're climbing because we're using our hands and our feet at the same time, like literally going up a vertical face of this mountain to get to this group, to get to this village that was at the top of this mountain. And so we're hiking this thing for six hours, okay? Some locals told us it would take us about two hours. And so we're like, oh yeah, we got that. That's easy. Six hours later, we get to this village, okay? So they made, they could make it in two hours because they were in shape and, you know, they were used to it and all that kind of stuff. It took us Americans, right, you know, fat and lazy Americans, six hours to climb the, this vertical face. So we're climbing this mountain. I'm not joking you. People, like we've got, we've got youth and, and college students and everything that are climbing this thing with us and older people. And, and, and so people are like running off the side of this trail, like throwing up like all the way there because they're, they're getting so sick and so uh, dehydrated and dizzy and all this kind of stuff. I mean, literally by the end of this hike, I, like, I got to the top and I was done and I was like bent over and I'm like seeing spots. Like I'm dizzy. I, we, we, talk, we brought all this water with us. I mean, we went through it in a heartbeat. We were just chugging water, okay? Just sweating like crazy. So we get up to the top of this mountain to this village. And I've got this football player that's with us, okay? He's from Monterey High School here in town. He was on the, uh, he was really great. He was big, huge, strong, just, in, you know, in extremely great shape. And he comes to me and he, I mean, he's got like tears in his eye. Clay, Clay, you've got to call someone from our church that has a helicopter to come pick us up off the top of this mountain. <laughs> he's like, I, I am not going back down this mountain. And I'm like, bro, Jeff, um, 
we, sorry, man, we don't have anybody in our church that, dri- that, that fly, drives a helicopter, that flies a helicopter, okay? It's just not happening. He's like, but Clay, he's like, I'm, I'm not joking, man. I'm not coming down off this mountain. I said, well, then you can stay here and live with them. I mean, go pick out your hut, you know? I mean, because we're walking down this mountain tomorrow, okay? So we're, we're up there. We're dying of thirst. We're going through all of our, all, all of our walks. And so we're trying to figure out, well, what are we going to drink? And well, well, some of the people, you know, point us to kind of this little uh, it's convenience store, but, but, you know, it's in a, a mud hut. So, so we're going over there and you'll never believe what they had in this little store. They had Coke. And this was really strange because we, we've just hiked six hours, like blood, sweat, tears, and throw up and other things that I won't tell you about, but... So we get up to the top of this thing, we're dying of thirst, and, and we're almost all out of our, like our purified water that we brought with us, and, and we're dying of thirst, and they've got Coke for us. And I remember thinking, like, Coke beat us to this village? <laughs> like, how is that even possible? That the Coke man beat us and brought Coke to this village that's like so remote, it's so in the middle of nowhere, like we can barely get there and survive the trek up this mountain to this village. I remember thinking, how did, like Coke beat the gospel? How is that possible? How is it possible that Coca-Cola has pretty much figured out its distribution to the entire world. To nearly, not every, but to nearly every people group on the planet. How, How have they figured out the distribution of Coke and Christians have yet to figure out the distribution of the gospel? We, and, and we haven't, we, we have yet to figure it out. We've got a distribution problem, and I'll prove it to you. Take out that map that's in your chair when you came in. I want to show you our distribution breakdown. Let's check this out. You got a map here of the world. You've got green, red, and yellow. Green, red, and yellow. And here's what... Here's what these mean. You've got this red right here. You've got this big block of red right here. The red means that it's less than 2% evangelical Christian, which is what we are. It's what uh, a certain belief system within, even within uh, Protestant Christianity, we, we are evangelical Christians. It's less than 2% evangelical Christian, less than 5% even professing Christian. So that's what a red area stands for. Stands for. You got a yellow area here on the map. That stands for less than, or, or sorry, greater than 2% evangelical Christian, but less than 5% professing Christian. Okay? Then you've got the green area, like America, you, the, the USA, okay? You've got greater than 2%, 2% evangelical Christian, greater than 5% professing, okay? So that, that's what the breakdown of here is. Now, you've got this kind of box right here. This is referred to, this red kind of box where this red area is right here on your map, that's referred to as the 1040 window. The 1040 window. It stretches from Africa uh, through the Middle East in here to East Asia. It goes from 10 degrees uh, north latitude to 40 degrees north latitude, which is why it's called uh, the, the 1040 window. Window. So check this out. Here's, here's some stats on the 1040 window. There are nearly 3 billion unreached people in the 1040 window, meaning nearly 3 billion people on our planet who have never heard about Jesus. Nearly 3 billion. In the 1040 window, there are nearly 6,000 people groups that are unreached. They've never heard about Jesus. You see, we have a distribution breakdown. And what I, what I want you to see tonight is that this isn't like God's plan. This breaks God's heart. And I want to show you what I mean. When I was, again, when I was a sophomore, junior in college, I took a class called Perspectives. Took it with my then girlfriend. Her name was Darby. 
she was taking perspectives, and I thought, you know, hey, yeah, I'm going to I'll, I'll want to hang out with Darby, you know, so I'm going to go take perspectives, right? And so I show up at this class, and we take it. It lasts a semester. She's getting college credit. I'm just kind of there uh, watching and participating and, you know, hearing the speakers and learning some things. We did a lot of studying together, right? So I'm taking perspectives with my girlfriend Darby, and I learned something that I'll never forget. That starting in Genesis, God's plan has been to bless a people in order that they would be a blessing to others. Let, let me show you what I mean. This, starts, this all starts back in Genesis. This is Genesis chapter 12, starting in verse 1. God speaking to a man named Abram. He said, then the Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. You see, God's plan has always been to bless a person or a people, to bless Abram, who became Abraham, to bless him so that he would be a blessing to other people. God blesses Israel by giving them the, the law and the tabernacle and, and, and this special fellowship and relationship with him so that they will be a blessing, it says, to all the nations, to the Gentiles, to, to, all the, to the whole world. God's plan in blessing Israel and choosing them and giving them this special relationship was so that they would tell other people, so they would bless the other nations with this knowledge of God, with this good news. You know, the same thing is true for us. God has blessed us with the gospel, with the good news about Jesus, so that we will be a blessing to others, to all the families on the earth. See, God said in Genesis 12, through you, Abram, all the families of the earth are going to be blessed. You might be thinking, well, how is Abram going to bless all the families on earth? Well, God's referring to Abraham's seed. You see, God's talking about making him into this great nation, that he's going to give him this family, that he's going to have all these sons and kids. And we find out later that Abram's great, 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 42 greats, grandsons later is Jesus. You see, God told Abraham, I'm going to bless you. I'm going to make you famous. I'm going to make you, I'm going to turn you into a great nation so that through you, like through your seed, all the families on earth will be blessed. The same thing is true for us. God has blessed us with the good news about Jesus so that we'll be a blessing to the nations. I learned that in a class called Perspectives when I was sophomore in college. And I'll never forget. But the problem is, even though we've been blessed with the gospel in order to bless others with the gospel. And even though just like God told Abraham, hey, go, go, leave your country and go to this land. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show it to you and I'm gonna bless all the families on earth through you. Even though he told Abraham to go, it's, he's telling us the same thing. Like, hey, go to all the families on earth and I'm gonna use you to be a blessing to the nations. See, we have a God who sins and tells us to go, but the problem is we just haven't gone. I mean, you can tell, right, when nearly three billion people haven't heard about Jesus, we just haven't gone. I want to show you one country in particular here in just a second. It's a country called Thailand. This is a country that our church experience life has felt a calling to be a part of and to be involved in long term. And so over the last year, we've been praying and looking at teams and people that we can send, that we can mobilize and send to be in Thailand long term to tell unreached people groups about Jesus, to tell people who've never heard about Jesus, to tell them about Jesus. And so over the last year, we've been taking trips there. We've 
Taking a couple. I went on one this past January. I'm going again this summer. We've got two other mission trips this summer to Thailand. Both of those are full, but we've got another one scheduled in December that I would love for you to consider going on. And I'll tell you how to sign up for that in a little bit. It's on our website. There's more information. But we've felt a calling as a church to, to be a part of helping solve this problem to being a part of the solution to seeing unreached people groups know about Jesus, to being a part of the solution to see all the families on earth blessed with the good news about Jesus. And so I want to show you two people groups in Thailand that are unreached. First is the central Thai. You can see this people group is mainly in Bangkok, but you see this people group, the central Thai is right here in this part of Thailand. And here's some stats on the Central Thai people group. It is the 23rd largest, UPG means unreached people group on the face of the planet. The 23rd largest with 19.3 million people and less than, that's not 2%, that's 0.2% evangelical Christian. Less than 0.2% evangelical Christian. So that's a Central Thai. Then... You've got also the Northeastern Thai. Now, the Northeastern Thai is up here in the northeast part of Thailand. And so here's some stats on the Northeastern Thai. It's the 24th largest unreached people group. So in Thailand, we've got the 23rd and the 24th largest unreached people group on the face of the planet. And so the Northeastern Thai has 17.8 million people in it. Again, less than 0.2% evangelical Christian, less than 0.4% professing Christian. You know, in our time in Thailand and with some of the relationships that we've been building with various Thai people, not just in the last year, but in the last 10 to 15 years, we've learned that many of them have grown up in Thailand without knowing a single Christian, without ever seeing a Bible. I mean, does that bother anybody else besides me? That there, there are people in the world, nearly three billion of them, that, are, that grow up and they never know one single Christian. Like there's never one person that could tell them about Jesus and who Jesus is. They've never seen a Bible. I mean, surely it means that, that not enough of us have gone to tell unreached people groups about Jesus if there are people in Thailand growing up and they've never met a Christian and they've never seen a Bible. That bothers me. And I pray if you're a follower of Jesus, it bothers you too. It's got to change. And our prayer is that it changes tonight. That we could be a part of the solution. That we would be those that, that are willing to go. And so I think God has a question for you tonight. It's a similar question he asked a man named Isaiah. You see, Isaiah was broken over the people around him that didn't know the Lord. So God said, hey man, what are you going to do about it? He asked him this question, and I think he's asking us the same question. This is Isaiah 6, verse 8. Then I heard the Lord, this is Isaiah saying, I heard the Lord asking, whom should I send? As a messenger to this people, who will go for us? See, God's saying, who who will go? Like, I'm looking for people to go and tell unreached people groups about Jesus. I'm looking for people who've realized and understand they've they've been blessed with the gospel so that they can bless other people with the gospel. I'm looking for people to go. Who will go? Who, who, who will go to Thailand and tell people who've never even met a Christian, never seen a Bible, who's going to go and tell them about Jesus? You see, even Jesus said the harvest is plentiful. I mean, clearly, if there's nearly three billion people who've never heard about Jesus, the harvest is plentiful. But then he goes on to say, but the workers are few. The workers are few because there's a lot of us who say, man, I've got a heart for that. And I want unreached people groups to know about Jesus, but I'm not willing to go. I'm not willing to do anything about it. That's why Jesus says the harvest is plentiful. 
But the workers are few. The workers are few because Christians in large part have just, have just ignored these red areas. I mean, let's just, let's just be honest about it, right? I mean, American Christians have just ignored these red areas of the world. I mean, we've essentially told them, you can go to hell. That's what we've told them. Because we've continued to neglect the red areas. And so I think God is saying, hey, who, who's going to go? Like, who will be my messenger? Who, who's going to go? I think a lot of us, when we hear that, we're like, um, you know, like him, her, right there, right there. They'll go, they'll go, right there. But that wasn't Isaiah's response. Check out what Isaiah said. Here I am. Send me. Like Isaiah saying, I'll go. I'll, I'll be your messenger. I'll, I'll go tell people about Jesus. I, I'll go. I'll go to Thailand. I'll go to the central Thai. I'll go to the northeastern Thai. I'll go send me. My prayer is tonight that there would be some of you that would say that same thing. Here I am, just like Isaiah did. Here I am, sin, me. Because see, here's the thing. As a college student, you're in a unique position right now. And that many of you are still deciding what you're going to do with the rest of your life. Some of you, you don't even maybe know what major you're going to stick with and you're going to end up graduating with. I'm assuming most of you aren't married. You don't have kids yet. You haven't really established yourself anywhere yet. In other terms, you're, in other words, you're, you're easy to mobilize. It's easier for you to go than it is for a lot of other people to go, which is why we're talking about this with you. We're praying that through the Raider campus, hundreds of students will be raised up to go to the nations. I was watching this message three weeks ago from this conference. It's called the, the, the Cross Conference. It's a missions conference where people who are feeling called to go to the nations go and they're challenged and equipped and trained on going to the nations. So I'm listening to this and there's a guy named David Platt. He's sharing he was speaking, and he started talking about how he was on a trip about a year ago where he was walking into this village, and this is a, a people group who have never heard about Jesus, and he's walking into this village, and as he's walking up, he sees smoke rising up from this village. And I go, what, you know, what's going on? Something's burning. Well, as they made their way into this village, they saw that there were a pile of bodies, and they were burning them. Instead of burying their dead, they were burning them. And he said, I, I just broke down and wept. Because I realized what, what I was seeing physically right now with my eyes was just a picture of what was actually happening to these people in hell. It was a picture of a reality that was happening somewhere else. Because he said no one ever told him. They never heard about Jesus. No one had told them. And then he said this. He said, people will spend an eternity in hell. And after that eternity, realize they are no closer to the end from when it started. And I heard that and I was just, I'm just gonna be honest with you, I was totally gripped by what he was saying in that moment. Like, I, I couldn't believe, my, my, I was so broken and so disturbed all in the same moment. I was just totally gripped by it and I have been ever since. That there were bodies burning And they had never heard about Jesus. 
because no one had ever gone to tell them. You know what I began to realize was that I've got two options. I've got two options. I can go and share the good news with unreached people groups, or if I'm going to stay here in America, I've got to be a part of something that's sending hundreds and thousands of people to unreached people groups. So my two options are, I've either got to go or I've got to send. But either way, I'm not off the hook on this thing. I've either got to go myself or I've got to be a part of sending other people to go, like training them and equipping them and mobilizing them and paying for them, like out of my own pocket. Like I've got to go or I've got to send. Those are my only two options. And can I tell you as a Christian, as a follower of Jesus, those are your only two options. It's to go or it's to send. If you're a follower of Jesus, it's your only two options. You're not off the hook on this thing. Either way. And if you're not a Christian, I want you to know the seriousness of the fine the Bible says we're going to pay for sin. The Bible says we've all sinned, we've all fallen short of God's standard to have a relationship with him, to go to heaven when we die. And the fine for our sin is death, a spiritual death. The Bible says it's eternity separated from God in a place called hell. And if you've never committed your life to Jesus, you've got two options. You can either continue to reject him and pay the fine yourself, or you can commit your life to Jesus. And when you do that, the Bible says Jesus, through his death on the cross, pays your fine for sin. That's the great news. You know, a lot of people say, well, how could a loving God send someone to hell for eternity? And I think a better question is how could you reject a loving God who sent his only son to die in your place and to pay your fine? How could you reject a loving God that doesn't want you to go there and made a way for you to be right with him and to spend eternity with him in heaven? How could you reject a loving God? But you have a choice. Some of you are going to pay the fine yourself because you continue to rebel and reject Jesus. Some of you maybe tonight need to commit your life to Jesus for the first time. And if that's you, I want to challenge you to take the connection card that you had when you came in, fill it out, Check the box that says I'm committing my life to Christ. And then after the service, you can take it to the Next Step Center. They've got a free Bible for you, and we can help you point you in the right direction from here. So if you're a Christian, you've got two options, go or send. And if you're not a Christian, you've got two options. You can let Jesus pay your fine or you can pay it. But here's what I want you to know. The Raider campus, this is not just about reaching students for tech. It is. We, we're wanting to reach out and see students commit their life to Jesus every single week. We, we, we are about that, but that's not where it ends because you have not been blessed with the gospel so that it could end with you. You've been blessed with the gospel so that you can be a blessing to others. And so our challenge to you tonight is this, just like Isaiah, is to say, I'll volunteer, I'll go. God, I'll I'll, I'll be your messenger. Here I am, send me. I know some of you are like, well, you know, I'm just not called to go. I've never felt that, that calling. But what most of the time we mean by that is just that I just don't want to go because I've never really spent five minutes praying about it or a season in my life praying and asking God, God, I'm willing. Is this what you want for me? Like I'll go if you want me to and looking for maybe a calling to stay rather than a calling to go since Jesus has already told us to go. He said, Matthew 28, go 
and to all the world. He said in Acts 1, go to the ends of the earth. We've already received our calling to go. And so my question for you is, have you ever spent a season of time praying, saying, God, I'm willing, here I am, send me, I'll go, I'll be your messenger. But if he calls you to stay, then, then you stay. And so you might be thinking, well, 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 then are we all supposed to go? No. But we are all supposed to say, God, here I am, send me. We should all be willing to say, God, I'm willing to go. I'm willing to be your messenger and go wherever you send me. I'm willing. I mean, do we, do we really think it's God's will that billions and billions of people die and go to hell without ever hearing about Jesus. When people in America have heard the good news about Jesus, most, anyways, thousands of times? No, that's, that's not God's will, that's our disobedience. So here's our challenge for you. We wanna challenge you to respond tonight to what you've heard. And our challenge is gonna be for you to publicly declare to God and to our church that you're willing, like you're willing to be a part of the solution. Now it's not signing on a line saying, yes, I'm going to Zimbabwe, you know, next week or anything like that, okay? That's not, that's not what the challenge is. But it is you saying, God, I wanna be a part of the solution. I, I wanna be your messenger. Whether that's going or sending, I don't know. I, I, I'm just, I'm willing, God. And so here I am, send me. And so again, some of you, God will end up telling you, yeah, it's, you need to go. As you pray and as you get equipped and take next steps, some of you, it'll be God will tell you, hey, you need to stay here. And I've got some plans for you so that you can help send your friends that are going. But either way, I wanna challenge you here in just a second. I'm gonna to count to three. If you're saying, hey, I'm willing, I'm willing to be a part of the solution, I wanna help out, here I am, send me God. I just want you to stand and say that, verbalize that and say, God, here I am, send me. So if that's you, on the count of three, I wanna challenge you to stand and to say that to God. God, here I am, send me. One, two, three. Let's give these guys a hand. Here's my challenge for you. If you stood, as we begin to sing here in just a second, we've got tables in the middle aisle between the front and the half and the back half of the worship center, okay? so. When we begin to sing, I wanna challenge you to make your way out of your row and just go put your information down. You can check that you're interested in phase one like Colby talked about. You can check that you're interested in uh, perspectives or you can check that you're interested in a Thailand mission trip. You can check all of them, you can check, two, you can check whatever you wanna check, but you're just gonna put your information down and then check one of those boxes. My other challenge for you is this, is to tweet, here I am, send me. With the hashtag turned down for what? I wanna challenge you to do that tonight, all right? So we're gonna sing, let me pray for you, and we're gonna worship God. God, thank you for people who are willing to partner with you and say, God, here I am, send me. And God, I pray that tonight, that this may be a night where people begin to feel called to go and they begin to take next steps. And God, the ones that are going, we, the rest of us, others of us will get behind them and say, hey, I'll send you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to support you. I'm going to give so that you can go. Because as followers of Jesus, we're either going to go or we're going to send, but we're all in this game to see the red areas turn green so that all the families on earth may know you, Jesus. Thanks for checking out one of our messages today. For more information about our church or to watch other messages, you can go to our website at experiencelifenow.com. Let us know if we can serve you in any way, and we hope to see you real soon.